Long Island is a broad area with a diverse population, but we do have something that unifies our discerning palates, our love for diners. The diner is a place where everybody, regardless of race, religion, or wealth, is welcome. It's always there, ready to serve. Everyone has their favorite diner, the spot where you feel like you're at home. From six in the morning, we open up, to 12 o'clock at night, we close. I didn't grow up eating at diners, but for me, it's truly one of the best things about living here on Long Island. I mean, where else can I go if I want to order a burger for breakfast, pancakes for dinner, or a banana split in the middle of the night? The closing of such long-standing establishments like the Empress in East Meadow and the Corinthian in Central Islip makes you wonder. Is the faithful and dependable diner in decline? We're concerned in how to build a place that would be everlasting for the next generation. In this episode of Feed Me TV, let's see what makes these restaurants a quintessential American institution and consider if they'll even be around for the next generation. With its chrome counter and fixtures and window dessert displays, the diner is an icon of American culture. Diners have been a part of American life for more than 150 years. What began in Rhode Island as a horse-drawn wagon has evolved into slick chrome and blinking neon temples to affordable comfort food. According to Richard Gutman, the country's foremost diner authority and the author of The American Diner, Then and Now, the literal definition of a diner is a restaurant that was built in a factory and constructed together on site. It's a wide variety, it's home style cooking, and it's good value. Over the years, diners proved flexible. They became larger, more sleek and modern than outright grandiose. Nowadays, the whole idea of diner, home-cooked, home-style food, counter service, wide menu, every place wants to be a diner. Today, people can get very touchy about what makes a restaurant a diner. In reality, a diner is more of an experience than an actual place. We may differ on specifics, but we know right away when we're eating in an authentic one. Like when you walk into Premier Diner, located right off the LIE in Comac, Helen and Peter Giorgatos have made the diner business their family's business. I am here with Peter. You are quite a diner legend. You started out as a busboy at 16 at Empress Diner. Correct. You owned your first diner at 22 years old. Yes. And now we're here at Premier. You have a long line of diners in your yes, family's blood. It's a lot of work, but I built it, I ran it, I made a success and I love it. That's why they were a natural choice when I went searching for the ultimate diner experience. A large stack of pancakes in the middle of the day. I think every legitimate diner, Peter, should be able to turn out lots and lots of pancakes. So I'm going to throw you a challenge. Make me a big stack, please. No problem. At least 10. I give yes. you 12. Thank you. The proper stack. <laughs> Round of applause for sure. Mm. The Dragatos family has been working in diners mm -hmm. for a combined 80 plus years. And soon their iconic American eatery will continue with a takeover from their two sons. And so now, how many kids are involved in two. Premier? Two. Both sons. Both sons. My right kids. Over want to do this. Uh -huh. I say, okay, you want to do this, stay with me. Did you say, listen, guys, I, do you really know what you're getting into? They knew uh, because they grew up uh, on it. They grew up on it. Uh -huh. They know exactly what they get into it. Now, why did you want to take this? I don't know. we got to continue a legacy. My grandfather owned diners before, now my father did it too, and then we move on from there. 
Drive five minutes on any road on Long Island and chances are you'll find another. But because there are so many, it's hard not to notice the competition they face today. You were quick to point out there used to be so many more diners. Way many more. They're gone. There are around 100 diners in Nassau and Suffolk counties today, but that's about 40 less than there were in 1990. Diners are, are dying out. I think there's only going to be a handful of diners that are out there. You have big corporate stores moving in. The mom and pop shops are moving out. When was the last time you'd heard of a new diner opening on Long Island? The unique thing about Landmark is that it's Long Island's only double-decker diner, and it's the island's youngest. It opened in 2009. Despite being a newcomer, this place still serves the usual favorites. This is Landmark Diner We're in the back of the kitchen. Of course, Chef Abner, you're going to make a classic here. It is the most popular egg dish. The Athenian poached eggs. Let's start making it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I like that yolkiness. This is going to be hot. I hope it doesn't burn me. Did you, did you try to burn me on it? No. Ah. You have to be careful. <laughs> A decade later, it's become so much harder to build a standalone diner. And if you even get a diner up and running, the workforce is your next challenge. Right now, our biggest problem is the help. Finding. To find people to work. You can't lose nobody. It's very hard to replace. After workforce, it's the challenge of competing with chain restaurants for affordable menu prices. Profit margins are getting tighter, so we can see the, the Walmart effect on small businesses. I see that in the food business as well. Some of the families, they don't want the kids to be in this business. They're very hard business. We've had the other diner for 20 years before this one, and then we've been here for 14 years, so... I don't know if I want to keep diners alive. I just want to keep this diner alive. Seeing a trend in the diner decline across Long Island and all the challenges they face, a new class of restaurateurs are taking up the reins, determined to keep the restaurant off the endangered species list. This is Pantry Diner. I'm with Tommy. You're the owner of this place. But this isn't something that you just thought about buying. This is a diner that's been in your family for a few generations. Tell me about the history. My grandfather was the original owner in 1949. My parents came involved in the 50s and 60s. And myself and my sister became involved in the 80s and 90s as we were growing up. And so you and your sister, were you kind of forced to take this over or did you want to? They let us work here as children, but they <laughs> <Let> insisted, <you. laughs> insisted we would go to school and do anything but. But we both loved the business and we stayed here. My sister eventually did move on, but I've been here ever since. Modernizing the menu is one powerful tool in keeping the regulars and luring new diners. As the expectations from our customers and diners have changed over the years, we definitely felt the need to evolve and, and change with them. I never expected to serve sushi in a diner, although I always wanted to, because mm -hmm. I just felt that customers wouldn't feel comfortable getting raw fish in a diner. Non-traditional, so right. non <laughs> So we really tried to um, open our eyes and our minds in trying new things, and they've all been accepted very much so. The diner has a bit of nostalgia. This place, besides those pictures, I don't feel that, good or bad. I mean, there's definitely a huge market for people that love a traditional diner that looks like a stainless steel and bright and flashy and loud. We've also seen a lot have left. We really just tried to incorporate many things, like a nice bar area where people can come and have a cocktail after work. Broaden our appeal to a more of a range of people, mm -hmm. younger clientele, and things that they can get in a high-end restaurant. It's always scary to make changes like that, but sometimes you just have to jump with both feet and just see what happens. Next up, I visit Sunny's Riverhead Diner and Grill. This is one of Long Island's oldest diners, which opened in 1932. Now, it may feel like a step back in time when you walk in, but it's the modern touches that have helped make this place flourish. You guys are thriving. What is that difference? What makes that happen? I feel that diners at some point almost lost their way a little bit by trying to find a way to cut corners and we found that the customer base today really wants to have a better product. Better dishes like these, a fresh cob salad, a Nutella and banana waffle, or how about a chili mac and cheese? 
The customers are asking for some of the items on your menu. Let's see, we have a salad here. Magical nice, nice. shrimp and avocado salad. Yes, what else do we have? Tell me about this one. This one right here is our uh, Avo Tomo. This is the best selling new item um, by far. <laughs> and we got right here. I, yes. uh, listen, Jim, anything in a skillet, I'm nice. game. That's our Polish skillet. Uh, Riverhead is famous for Polish town, so uh -huh. we thought we had to have something that would showcase that. Absolutely. Should we grab a bite of that? I gotta try it. Absolutely. This. What was that, the Katanska? Taranska. Taranska. Yep. You can bring different ingredients, more pricey products, better things, but then the prices will change and the diners might not like that, and they may leave. They did leave at first yeah. <laughs> because the prices did go up. They very quickly changed their mind, and the business started to grow within the first six months of us being here. The Pantry and Sunny's Riverhead Diner have undergone considerable updates, one reason why Richard doesn't think the diner is in jeopardy of disappearing. The diner has always been a chameleon in terms of the design of the building and the food that they serve. Though there has been a steady decline of Long Island diner openings, Richard says this is normal. There's a constant battle. Yeah. Really, of things are, are they're going away, they're declining, they're disappearing, and they're being revived. But they're never going to go away completely because uh -huh. they're really fixtures, part of our culture and our neighborhoods. And uh, they're going to be here forever in one form or another. I'm going to stay here the much I can. I'm doing this since I'm 16. Talk to my people, talk to my customers. I love it. I mean, it's my life. A diner's charms can't be denied. It's that quintessential American experience that appeals to everyone, no matter what your background.